Hello dear students, myself Dr. Sachin Gurule, Assistant Professor from Department of Zoology KTHM College, Nasik. In the previous video of subject entomology first belongs to chapter number 4 that is morphology of insect. We have started the second kind of appendages present on the thoracic part of the insect that is the wings and in that lecture we have learn the morphological variation into the wings of insects then we have discussed or learn the structure of the wing and the articulation of the wing along with we have also seen the different wing areas or the region which can be recognized on the wings of insect now in this video we are going to start with the further topic that is the wing venation in insect that is generalized pattern and the wing tracheation. So let's see. So before start with, we have already learned the wings of an insect are somewhat triangular in shape and it possesses the three distinct margin. The anterior margin is also referred as the coastal margin or the anterior margin as the coastal vein is present at the anterior side. Then second margin is referred as the outer margin. Outer margin is also referred as the apical margin or it is also referred as the termin in some insects which represent the outermost part of the wing while the third margin is referred as the inner margin or it is also referred as the anal margin and so in some cases it is also referred as a dorsum. So in this way the wings of a generalized insect is generally having a triangular shape rough triangular shape and these are provided with the three margin that is coastal margin, outer margin and the inner margin. And these whole wings membrane they are transversed via the presence of a different kinds of the wings giving a particular venation pattern which is very specific, specific to the insect and the groups they are representing. So let's see what exactly the wing venation is. The veins are also known as a nervule and it represents the ribs like structure of the wings which is giving actually the support to the wing. So these are the hollow, tubular and the sclerotized structure and each is typically provided with the nerves, the trachea and the circulating blood. According to the Holzwart in 1940, trachea and nerves, they grows into the channel only after their pattern has been established. The veins, these are secreted by the epidermal cells through the deposition of cuticular material above and below the wing pads known as a lacuna only at the final stage of the molting in case of the adult. The wing venation represents a complex organization of the veins or the nervures within the wings and this is commonly referred as the wing venation. The veins may be unbranched, it may be branched, it may be isolated or jointed and with one another they may join by the presence of the cross veins. On the basis of morphological characteristics of the veins of a generalized insect or most ancient insect represent a simple system of the wing venation and this system of the venation is referred as the archetype venation. So what we are going to learn the type of venation is a archetype venation which is a generalized wing venation found into the insects. So this is a somewhat triangular shaped wings you can see in the diagram and this wing lamina is provided with a number of veins. These veins are having their own different names and their branching and these veins which are recognized on the wings of the insect are the costa, subcosta, 
रेडियल मेन मेडियल मेन क्यूबिटस एनल जुगल एंड क्रॉस मेन सो ईच एंड एवरी टेरीगोट इंसेक्ट विच कंटेन्स द विंग्स ऑन देअर मेसो एंड मेटाथोरासिक सेगमेंट they bear the wings and that wings is bearing a different kinds of the wings in different number and representing a particular pattern of the venation which is referred as the wing venation so let's see one by one first of all the first wing is always known as the costa the costa can be designated as a capital c so here in this diagram if you see this is a anterior margin this anterior margin is also referred as a costal margin because the anterior margin contains a vein which is known as a costa which is designated by capital c so here you can see so this is a costal vein which is present at the anterior margin of the wing and hence the margin of the wing is commonly designated as the costal margin due to the presence of costal vein now it starts from the humeral plate so here this is a humeral plate and at the wing base it runs towards the outer margin of the wing without giving any branches during its course means this is a unbranched vein it arises from the basal part where the humeral lobe is there and it represent the anterior margin and it reaches up to the apex region so here in this diagram also you can see so this is the anterior margin and at the anterior margin there is a presence of vein which is known as a costa and hence that margin is designated as the costal margin now this costa is a convex vein and may bear sometimes a stigma as it can be seen on the fore and the hind wings of the odonatan insect so here which is referred as a pterostigma but the pterostigma is not present always in all insect is present or it's found into the insects belongs to the order odonata and in case of only the fore wings of hymenoptera socoptera and mecoptera they also contains a such a kind of the stigma which is present on the costal margin of the wing so this is about the first vein known as the costa designated by capital c the next one is a subcosta subcosta is designated by capital s small c that is sc for the subcosta now this in this diagram you can see so this is a subcostal vein the vein which is immediately next to the costa is referred as the subcosta so here in this diagram you can see the subcosta which is a second vein the second vein is distally divided into the two branches the outer and the inner branch and usually designated as the subcosta 1 and subcosta 2 respectively means this subcosta is a branch vein at a running over a short distance it may give rise to the branching and the, the two branchings are designated as the subcosta 1 that is sc1 and subcosta 2 that is sc2 respectively now it is a concave vein concave in the sense here you can see the shape of the vein is somewhat concave as it reaches up to the margin of the wing it starts from the distal end of the first axillary so here the first axillary is there so this subcosta is start with the first axillary at the wing base and at the site of branching it forms a sort of fork so here you can see the some sort of the fork is get formed as both the branches of the are widen far away from one another and both these branches are reaches to the margin of the wing in the absence of costa it represent the first vein of the wing in some insects rarely the costal vein which when it is absent at that time subcosta is representing the first vein of the insect wing in some cases so this is about the subcosta then third vein is referred as a radius or it is also referred as a radial vein which is designated by capital r now it starts from 
the anterior end of the second axillary sclerite. So here the second axillary sclerite is there and this is a radial vein or the radius vein designated by capital R and it represents the third major vein of the wing. This is a third major vein or distinct vein. After running over a short distance as a strongly sclerotized convex vein. So here you can see the convex nature of this radial vein at the basal area. It divides into the first and into the two branches. The outer branch is referred as R1 runs directly towards the outer margin while the second branch so here this is a radial vein after running a short distance it is divided into the two the first branch is directly reaches to the margin which is designated as the r1 while the second branch is may give rise to the different branching again and the second branch is referred as the radial sector vein. So this is a radial sector vein means the posterior branch of the radius is referred as radia sector which appears to be the concave and it gives origin to the four branches and are termed as the R2, R3, R4 and R5. The number of branching of the radial sector differ from different insect. Now you can use a two kinds of the terminology for designating the radial veins. The first branch is always referred as the R1 while the second branch or the posterior branch of the radia is referred as the radius sector and radius sector is always start with the R2 or instead of R2 you can designate it as the radius sector 1, radius sector 2, radius sector 3 and radius sector 4. So here in this diagram you can see easily. So this is a radial vein and this is the first branch. This first branch is directly reaches up to the apical margin that is represented as the simple capital R or you can put it as a R1 while the posterior vein is going to divide into the again four branches and as the posterior branch of the radia is referred as a sectorial vein hence it is designated as the radia sector 1 that is RS1, RS2, radia sector 3 and radia sector 4. So in this way the radia is having a branched vein anterior directly reaching to the margin and posterior is referred as radius sector and the number of branches is differ from insect to insect for the radius sector. So this is about the radial vein or the radius vein can designated as a capital R. The next one is a medial vein designated as a capital M. Now this one is the fourth major vein we start from the distal median plate and mostly fuses with a radial vein. In many insects, there is a fusion occurs for that radia and the medial vein. But in some cases, it is a separate one. At the base, it is largely sclerotized and the convex vein. But after running over a some distance or the short distance, it gives rise to again two branches. So, so here you can see this is the anterior branch and this one is a posterior branch. This anterior median branch is designated as the anterior uh, media anterior one or MA1 or you can simply number it as M1, M2 so on according to the number of branches having with the media anterior vein. So further this media anterior is further divided into the two convex branches that is media anterior 1, media anterior 2 or you can directly designate as the M1 and the M2. The posterior branch that is for the media on contrary it is a concave and sometimes also known as a media sector. The posterior vein is always referred as a sectorial vein. So this is referred as the media sector. 
so you can designate this as with a continuous number of the anterior for example if there are only two branch for the media anterior you can designate it as m1 m2 and the first branch of the sectorial median vein is designated as a m3 or m4 and so on or instead you can write it as the media sector 1 media sector 2 or media sector 3 according to the number of sectorial branch present on the media sector vein now it divides thermally into the four branches that is media posterior 1 media posterior 2 or media posterior 3 or media posterior 4 so you can designate it as the sectorial vein or you can designate it as the media posterior vein in case of the odonata the ma that is media anterior is present while in other higher insect only media posterior is existing falsely representing the media as the four branched vein means only in case of the odonata the anterior branch is well developed while in the most of the insects the remaining higher insect the media posterior is only exist and falsely representing the media and hence usually that medial vein are designated as m1 m2 m3 m4 so on so here in this diagram the same you can see here so here if in this case you can see there is no medial vein at the basal region as it get fused with that of the radius and this one are the posterior branching that is m1 and m2 so this is about the medial vein the next one is a cubital vein or the cubitus this cubitus is designated as the capital cu that is c cubital it is the fifth vein so here you can see so this is a cubital vein which is a fifth vein and starts from the distal median plate at the wing base so here distal median plate is there in this, uh, at, this, at this position from which that cubital vein arises. At the beginning it seems to be the convex vein but later on it divides into the first cubitus and the second cubitus which are the convex and concave respectively. So cubital one is a convex and the cubital 2 is a convex vein as they reaches up to the marginal region. The first cubital that is Cu1 may ramify into the terminal branches and the anterior first cubitus that is Cu1a and the posterior first cubitus that is Cu1b can be designated. So this is a cubital first it further divisible into the two branches and this is belongs to the anterior margin hence or anterior branch hence it can be referred as Cu1a or Cu1, Cu1b according okay so these are the cubital vein or here in this diagram you can see the Cu for cubital anterior 1 this is Cu anterior it is cubital anterior Two. and here in this you can see so this is a posterior branch which is cubita posterior and according to the how many cubital posterior are present in uh, insect they are accordingly numbered so this is about the cubital vein the next vein is referred as the anal vein which is designated by a capital A so this is the anal region which contains a vein which is referred as the anal veins and designated by the capital A. These veins start from the close association of the third axillary sclerite and constitute a group of veins in the anal region of the wing. So this is the anal region. Whatever veins which are present into the anal region of the wing is referred as the anal vein or it is also referred as the vanal vein. The anal veins are also termed as the vanal vein and the anterior most anal vein which lies just be behind the cubitus is termed as the post cubitus that is PCU, PCU according to the sum workers. 
the number of anal vein varies from 1 to 12 and that depends on how much long or the length of the vanal area present into the wing of the insect. The veins are generally the convex and unbranched but some of them may be divided into the subbranch but it is in many very rare conditions. So number of anal veins is ranges from 1 to 12. In case of orthopteroid insect particularly on the hind wing, you will found a large or highly developed anal lobe which contains a many veins and at that time their number may reaches up to the 12. So this is about the anal vein designated by the capital A and you can name it as A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on according to the how many anal veins are present into the anal lobe of the wing of insect. The next one is a jugal vein designated by capital J. So this is a jugal area of the wing. So whatever veins which are present into the jugum region which can be referred as a jugal vein and designated by capital J. These veins occurs in a jugal lobe. Their number may vary, differ variably but commonly are the two first and second jugal vein. The only two jugal veins are generally there. So these are short, unbranched and the concave in appearance and their lies just beneath the jugal fold which separates the anal area from that of the jugum and whatever jugum is there which represent the vein which is referred as the jugal vein. So this is about the jugal vein. Then last kind of the veins are referred as the cross veins. Now various types of the longitudinal veins are linked with one another by a cross veins. For example, so here you can see so this is a radial vein which is a principal longitudinal vein and second one is a radial vein. So the vein which is responsible for joining the two longitudinal veins for example this radia and media is joined by this vertical vein is referred as a cross vein and it, it can be named as radiomedial cross vein. The cross veins runs in a vertical plane and are confined to the adjacent longitudinal veins only. From their location, these veins are termed as, for example, first one is a humeral cross vein. This humeral cross vein is lies between the costa and subcosta. When the cross vein which is responsible for joining the coastal vein with that of the subcoastal vein at that time, that cross veins can be referred as the humeral cross veins. So here you can see the humeral cross vein. The humeral cross veins, the number of humeral cross vein you can found into the uh, Paleoptera insect order. For example, in the Odonata and Ephemeroptera, you will found a number of such a humeral cross vein which joins actually the costa and the subcosta. Then second one is a radia cross vein which lies between the first and second radial vein. So this is a first radial vein and this one is a second radia anterior and radia posterior. The cross vein which joining the two branches of the radia is referred as a radial cross vein. Similarly, the cross vein which joins the radia and media can be referred as a radia medial cross vein. Then here you can see, so this is a posterior media branch and this one is a cubital anterior branch. The cross vein which joins the media and the cubital can be referred as a media cubito cross vein. Here in this case, the this is a cubital longitudinal vein and this one is an anal vein. The cross vein which joins the cubital and anal can be designated as cubito anal vein. And similarly, another cross veins which may lies in between the two respective anal vein at that time that vein is referred as the anal cross veins. So in this way if any two of the longitudinal vein or their branches they are joined by a vertical short vein these are referred as the cross veins and they are of different type. So this kind of the wing venation is referred as the archetype venation which can be generally found into the 
insects. So let's take a very quick summary. The anterior margin represents a vein which is referred as a costa and hence that margin is referred as the costal margin. Then second vein it is a subcostal vein. Sometimes that subcostal vein directly reaches to the margin and in some cases that subcostal vein may gives out into the two branch that is subcosta 1 and subcosta 2. So here in this diagram there is no branching of the subcosta. The next one is a radial vein. So here at the base you can see that this is a radial vein. It is divided into two. This is an anterior branch and this one is a posterior branch. Anterior branch is directly reaches to the tip and hence it can be designated as only capital R or you can designate it as R1 and the second one is always the posterior branch and that is a sectorial vein hence you can number it as the R2, R3, R4, R5 or you can designate it as a radius sector 1, radius sector 2, radius sector 3, radius sector 4 and so on. The next one is a medial vein. In some many cases, the medial vein is get fused with the radia. Hence, you cannot be able to form here the medial vein. But you can see, so these are the posterior branching of the medial vein and can, can be designated as M1, M2, M3. In most of the cases, the media anterior is completely absent, is only present into the odonata. And remaining, they are having the branching of the posterior one can be designated as M1, M2, M3 and sometimes it can be uh, also designated as media sector 1, media sector 2 or media sector 3 in some cases. That depends on which kind of the terminology you are following and accordingly you can designate that veins. The next one is a cubital vein. The cubita anterior and cubita posterior is also there. So here you can see the anterior is branching into the cubital anterior 1 and cubital anterior 2. And next one, this one is a anal vein. The, there is a fusion of the two branches is there. Hence it can be designated here the A1 and A2. So there is no presence of the jugal vein in this case. So similarly the wing venation can be uh, present in this diagram also. So, with this we have learned the different kinds of the vein that is costa, subcosta, radia, then media, cubital, anal and jugal vein and along with that the cross veins are also present which is responsible for joining the two longitudinal veins. Then next kind of venation is referred as archiduction type of wing venation. In paleodictyoptera, the longitudinal veins are netted by indistinct cross veins forming an irregular network of the vein and is called as the archaeoduction kind of the venation. So here you can see there are many longitudinal veins and the longitudinal veins are connected or netted by many indistinct cross veins and giving a net like appearance to the whole wing. And such a kind of the wing venation is referred as the archaeoduction type of wing venation, which can be present into the many paleodictyoptera or dictyoptera in the sense the is a taxon of cockroaches. So cockroaches generally having a such a kind of the wing venation pattern can be referred as archaeoduction. Now, according to the Comstock and Needham system. And badly in 1939 and Snodgrass, the archetype venation described above undergoes a lot of variation among the different group of the modern insect. And this is due to reduction or the addition of the number of veins. The veins may be degenerate, may be atrophy or fused together and therefore it becomes a very difficult to make a homology in between the wing venation of even closely related insect group in case of the insect who shows is such a kind of archaeoduction wing venation. Similarly, the presence of large number of veins in some insect occurs mostly due to either multiplication, either duplication or enormous branching of the principal vein due to unique distribution of a longitudinal and the cross veins 
the wing areas is divided into the large number of small places and these small places here you can see the number of veins are responsible for dividing the whole area into the small places and these spaces are referred as the cells they can be divided into the two types basal cell lying towards the basal region of the wing and the distal cells which lying at the distal area or in between the branches of the principal vein the venation of the wing is greatly modified in a different group of insect but usually they are having a such a kind of the venation either archetype venation or either archaeoduction kind of venation so this is about the wing venation and the next topic is the wing tracheation now according to the vital in 1962 each instar including a pupal stage possesses its own tracheal system which may more or less differ from that of the next instar and forms the adult stage the tracheal pattern is not necessarily the homologous between the instar because new additional tracheal branches are formed and old ones are generally discarded during the development now according to the written in 1962 at a generic or the family level the wing tracheation in some insect is stable enough and is helpful in the study of venation pattern it should be noted that the particular trachea which serves the wing never migrate or fuse as has been brought forward by the comstock and needham system in 1898 in almost all insect each four and hind wings are served by a two trachea anterior trachea and the posterior trachea the anterior trachea we generally supply the oxygen to the costomedial venation means whatever veins which lies from the costa and the media which are supplied the oxygen with the help of anterior trachea while the posterior trachea is supply the oxygen to the cubito vanal venation means after cubital up to the vanal or jugal veins whatever oxygen supply is there that oxygen supply by the posterior trachea so this is a generality for all the insect that is anterior trachea supplying the oxygen to the costomedial venation and posterior trachea supply the oxygen to the cubito vanal venation but there is always exception one only in case of ephemeroptera in which all the veins are only served by the anterior trachea where the posterior trachea is not there in case of the ephemeroptera so in this way the two trachea anterior and posterior is responsible for supplying the oxygen to the venation into the wings in all insect except to that of the ephemeroptera so this is about the wing tracheation and here with we have completed the topic wing venation and wing tracheation so thank you thank you very much